recently a new client called us and said, Chris, we need your help. I said, sure, what's up? He said, well, we built this amazing app that we're gonna give to all our sales managers and they can do um, live product recommendations at the client and it looks really cool and slick, it's online, but it's very cool. So, yeah, well, well. so what, it's not only that, we also hired top data scientists to build the best data recommendation algorithm you can ever dream of. It's really amazing. It's like, I said, yeah, okay, well, why do you need me exactly then? It's like, well, we kind of have a few stability and performance problems in the back end and we're not getting it solved. We tried this whole Hadoop Spark thing, it's not really working out for us. So can you help? I was like, sure, that's something I can do. <laughs> like, I don't know anything about the recommendation algorithm, but I can sure fix a slow running Spark application. So I was like, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll come to your offices and I'll, I'll, I'll discuss. So I arrived there and it's like, okay, show me, how does your back end look like? How do you get to these amazing results? And they showed me something that looked like this. So guys, you, you can't be serious. You have the best data, the best data scientists. You have the greatest UX, but you you can't build a basic backend. It's like yeah, no, it's just some iPad, the notebooks copied around. And you have to first go to notebook three, and then run cell seven, and then go to notebook one, and then run cell two. And like, but can you please fix it for us as soon as possible? I was like, no, 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 no sorry. This is unfixable. I can't, I can't help you with this. I mean, we can do some patches, but you need to throw this away. Um, but the, the, the point I'm getting at is bigger than that. It's like, why is it that companies can be so good at data science and then at the same time they can build it on, on this very unstable pile of rubble, I would say. I thought we solved that problem years ago when we, when we came up with the concept of data science. It was that the data scientist should know and uh, mathematics and computer science and has a business understanding. So. Our unicorn data scientists should solve all these problems, right? Not only the mathematical part. But in reality, what we see is not really true. Most data scientists are very good at mathematics, have some business understanding, but they clearly have no clue about engineering. So usually what we say to our clients is you should manage your expectations, lower your expectations, because it's not that easy to find these very special unicorns who can do everything. Um, so. Because the data scientists only focus on the real uh, mathematical part, they came with this notion of a data engineer, and that's what we with Data Minded working on as well. Uh, data Camp wrote a blog about it, and they say, data engineers and data scientists work together and wrangle big data and provide insights to business critical decisions. It's kind of vague. I mean, in, in theory, yes, that works. In practice, we, we often see something like this, where it's, it's, it's the two parts of a dysfunctional marriage where they're often two separate teams. The data engineer, he only thinks about his scaling problems, his data pipelines, his workflows, his logs, his, his, his Hadoop systems, whatever. And the data scientist only thinks about a rock curve, about accuracy, about hyperparameters. And they, they have nothing in common, right? It's two completely separate worlds. They don't talk to each other. They don't understand each other. And usually when two parents fight, who is the victim? It's always the children, and who is the child in a data science project? It's the business, right? <laughs> they always keep crying, they always, <laughs> they always keep asking more, they just want a tool that works, gives me an immediate return on investment, looks as good as Apple, is smarter than Google, and is more stable than Netflix. How hard can it be? <laughs> and and I, I'm exaggerating here, but they're kind of right. I mean, that's why they pay us to do, right? That, that's why they hire us, that's why they throw money at us. Why are we not solving their problems? And I think I recently read a blog about this and I found the, the analogy that they use very useful and I want to share this with you. So they talk about what they call the data science hierarchy of needs. It's like the Maslow pyramid. You start with AI and deep learning. That's where all the business people want to go. They want to have top level insights, but they forget that to get there, you need to get your basics right. You need to be able to collect data in a systematic way. You need to store data. You need to have like, just the basics. You need, you, you need to get that right. And obviously, a data scientist can't do the entire pyramid, right? So, so what, what are a few of the options? How can, we, how can we help business? So one option is to specify a specialist for each of these layers. But in my experience, that never works out because you have more people in your team and you're just more in meetings than anything else, and it's not very efficient. Um, we've seen this concept where data science scientist tackles the, bottom, uh, the top parts and data engineer focuses on, on the bottom parts, I would say. That works. If, if you learn to love each other, there's some really basic relationship advice that I can give you that has nothing to do with data. But it's really, you have to have mutual respect for each other. You have to have trust in each other's capabilities. You have to be honest about your own progress. Uh, you have to support each other when it's not going well. You have to communicate very clearly. If you're in different teams, that makes things a lot more complex. 
Note that I don't talk about contracts or deadlines or, or long roadmaps. All these things are tools that don't work to get a good relationship with, with, between data scientists and data engineers. It's really, you should see this as, as two parts of one team. That, that, that is a path to success. I think what I want to add on that is that we recently seen, we, 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 experiment, uh, we experienced it with a few clients, is that in, instead of making this very clear distinction between data scientists and data engineers, you can, I don't know what you want to call it, but you can call this build a team of data natives, of data professionals, of data engineers, I don't care. The point is that everybody in your team should be able to understand the entire pyramid. It's okay to focus, to have a, a specialization in a few parts of the pyramid, but you should understand the entire pyramid and then work together as a team to deliver that. How does that look like? like? Like every project, you do it in iterations, right? And with iterations, I don't mean first make sure your collect layer is fine, then make sure your move and store layer is fine, then make sure you can do aggregations and st stuff like that. No, I mean every iteration, you should take a vertical slice of the, of, of the pyramid and, and, and deliver only that part. I'm going to give an example of, of a client we, we recently had. So it's, it's the pyramid again. Uh, uh, we, we did four iterations. And the first iteration was very simple. We just hacked together a machine learning algorithm in Python. We only had like 20 features, only the happy part. We didn't do any cleansing. Everything was manual. Um, and we just used sample data. This is your typical data science project. And very often clients think once they're there, they solve the puzzle. Well, no, that's just iteration one. And you need to improve all the layers of your pyramid, not just improve your algorithm, improve all the layers. So it doesn't really matter what steps you take, as long as you take, if you improve all, all, all the iterations, if you take care of all the layers for every iteration. So we doubled the features, we improved our algorithm, but we also made sure that the, the data sources were clean. We made sure we could run automated. Um, next up, we had an external review of our algorithm, which, which greatly improved its accuracy, but also we made sure that we, our workflows were optimized. We had some monitoring. We, we involved external unstructured data sources as well. And then finally, we're now looking into more real-time, where we don't do real-time predictions or real-time data with everything fancy spancy. But the point is that you don't get there if you don't do three simpler iterations first. And it's very important that you, that you don't do them horizontally, but you do them vertically. Um, We've experienced if you do it like this, you can speed up a data science project by an order of magnitude. And even if our algorithms aren't the best in the world, we, we still beat our competition just because we got the basics right. Um, and we've seen it at a few clients actually. So to summarize my talk, it's very short. Um, I think, think about the entire pyramid when you're doing a data science project. Don't only focus on, on the machine learning part, but think, think of the entire pyramid. Um, deliver value in iterations and obviously, uh, do a vertical slice at each iteration, and um, I think we've we've been successful in, in doing that that way. And I hope it helps for you as well in your next data science project. Thank you very much.